Mental disorders have a genetic underpinning. That means that there are some genetic factors, risk factors, you know, variation of genes that actually increase the risk. They don't, most of them don't make you ill, but they increase the risk that you may develop a, a mental illness. What we didn't know is what happens in the brains. We knew that the brain is much more complex than we anticipated. There are many more cell types. There are different areas of the brain that likely have different functions. And some areas are more are likely to be more involved in the expression of a mental disorder than others. So we decided to start this program with that we called PsychEncoder. Let's look at the brain specifically and let's see if we can link genetic signals to genetic regulation to molecules in particular regions of a brain and particular cell types and let's see if we can associate that with disease. And guess what? The PsychEncro project came through and indeed we are now seeing the first um, signs of, of molecular perturbations, we call them, of changes in particular cells, in particular cell types, in particular neurons uh, that are associated with mental disorders. We are at the beginning, I'm not trying, you know, I cannot uh, uh, overstate how early, we relatively early we are, but I can confidently say for the first time we have a beginning of an understanding of the biology, the molecular pathophysiology of mental disorders, schizophrenia, bipolar and autism spectrum disorder. What we also learned from this first pass of this initiative is how important developmental timelines are for brain development that in and the risk for mental disorders. So there is a, there is a temporal uh, trajectory that can be changed by uh, genetic perturbations and those in, in turn increased risk for mental disorders. Uh, some of the projects in PsychEncode actually deal with uh, cellular model systems because it is so difficult to study the brain directly. What the scientists have been able to do is to derive they take tissue samples, they may just take skin, skin tissue and, and turn skin tissue into neurons, into brain cells, and then characterize those brain cells, those derived brain cells, uh, um, phenotypically and molecularly, and to see whether the disease signatures are preserved. A bit surprisingly, but uh, very interestingly, uh, in Psychenco we find some traces of these uh, of, of disease signatures in cellular model systems, so sort of opening the door f wider for the use of cellular model systems for, uh, as models for uh, neuropsychiatric disorder. We actually see perturbations in gene expression networks that can be linked to specific diseases, for example, autism. So with the Sagengo project, we were actually able to identify several hundred new risk genes for uh, mental disorder in particular. There's